right, uh, everyone. Well, thank you for coming. I am uh, here on behalf of the mayor, uh, who couldn't make it today, but is very excited to see this get started. Uh, and I'd like to introduce our, uh, the mayor's emergency management coordinator, Rocky Vaz. Thank you, Tristan. Uh, good morning, everybody. So we are here very excited uh, to announce that we have been allocated 5,000 vaccines by the state, and we'll be opening up our drive-through vaccination hub at the K. Bailey Hutchinson Convention Center. As we speak, 5,000 uh, emails, phone, text messages are going out, inviting people to schedule starting tomorrow at 10 a.m. for their vaccination. We'll be operating nine days a week, nine, nine hours a day, sorry, nine days a week, maybe, uh, for the next three days, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And uh, our goal is to complete vaccinating 5,000 people uh, by the close of business on Saturday. Uh, that's the allotment that we have. We are hopeful that we'll get another allotment next week hopefully a little more than 5,000, uh, but we will take whatever allocation the state gives us uh, and start up our operation next week on Tuesday. Normally the vaccines get here either late on Monday or early on Tuesday. So that's our goal. Again, depending on when we get our vaccines, we will uh, start operation based on uh, when we receive them. So that in general is where we are. Uh, the 5,000 people that we sent out invites to are from the database that we got from the Dallas County Health Human Services. We are still encouraging people to go to Dallas County website to register to get vaccines. That is the only way you are going to be in the queue to get vaccines when they're available. And we're going to be pulling from that database, prioritized by the county based on many factors, uh, and we will send out appointments to them. And just so that everybody is aware, Parkland, UT Southwestern, Baylor, Scott & White, the other three hubs are also pulling from that same database when they have vaccines left over after they have done the 1A, which is the healthcare workers, that's the priority at those three hospitals. Fair Park site is also pulling from that same database. So we have a centralized database and five hubs are getting the information from that, from that database to prioritize and vaccinate people. Uh, we continue to partner with the county at the Fair Park site, and even at this site, we continue to partner with them that we are getting uh, the prioritized list from the county. Uh, and, you know, in consultation with Dr. Wong and uh, DFR medical director, Dr. Marshall Isaacs, uh, on the medical side of that, on the clinical side of that. So with that, I'm going to introduce Assistant Chief, Chief of Staff, Britt Stidham, who's going to be the incident commander for this event and walk you through some of the logistics that's going to take place here starting tomorrow. Thank you, Rocky. Uh, as he said, my name is Brett Stidham. I'm the Chief of Staff for Dallas Fire Rescue, and I'll be the incident commander for this operation. So we're going to start again tomorrow 10 a.m. Um, we, uh, like Rocky said, we have 5,000 vaccines this week. So we're going to be working through trying to get all those vaccines out as quickly as possible. Uh, we're looking at about 2,000 a day. So a little less than 200 an hour is what we're going to be shooting for. Um, the process is um, we're going to be pulling from the county's database and we're getting some, uh, we're getting emails and uh, some people don't have emails, so we'll, we'll actually get phone numbers. So we'll send out text messages and emails to, to those residents to, uh, to go ahead and get scheduled. And we're encouraging everybody to schedule as quickly as possible because um, we, we have limited space this week. So um, if by chance somebody doesn't have a cell phone or an email address, uh, we've got a process set up for that where um, we'll have an operator set up that they can actually enter them into the system and schedule them. So uh, once they get scheduled, they'll show up. We'll send out information on where to show up and what time. Uh, once they get here, the total process will take about an hour. 
uh, from the time they arrive till we stage them, till we actually run them through the process. And that's worst case scenario. Um, and so from that, we're gonna have about 80 people working this operation. Um, we'll have about 16 tables set up for this operation. And depending on future allotments, um, it, it will be expandable. So, uh, but that's set up for what we have this week. Um, other than that, that's kind of our process as we go through it. And kick it back to Rocky. Also, I also want to recognize uh, Chief Artis, Dallas Fire Rescue Chief, and uh, Dr. Marshall Isaacs, Medical Director for Dallas Fire Rescue. Uh, with that, uh, we'll open it up for any questions. That is accurate. The question was the, the prioritized list. Uh, so based on the designation as a hub, uh, we are expected to vaccinate anybody, any Texan who is on the waiting list. So any Texan can register at any of the hub sites. Uh, similar to, I could go and register at Harris County if I wanted to, if I was there, if vaccines are available. So. Uh, we'll, we'll get some analytics on who the 5,000 people are that we got the list, and we'll be able to report that out. But uh, we are not restricting it to City of Dallas residents. Uh, we are getting the list as prioritized by Dallas County and PCCI, Parkland Center for Clinical Innovation, and that's what we are going with. Are you pulling exclusively from the registration database? That is correct exclusively from the registration database are the people that are getting invited to schedule an appointment. No walk-ins will be allowed. If you do not have an appointment, please do not come to the site because you will be turned away. You're not gonna do walk-ins. For the 1A, uh, that is, where our hospital systems, they are, uh, they are focused on that, Parkland, UT Southwestern, and Baylor. Uh, the list that we got, there might be a combination of 1A and 1Bs in there. Uh, we don't have visibility on what is 1A and what is 1B. So based on the prioritization that Dallas County sent us, there likely there might be some 1A, but we are not specifically doing anything different for a 1A population at this site. Uh, that is a concern, uh, but here we are. Uh, we got notification on Friday that we're getting vaccines, uh, and we had to uh, you know, get together very quickly, uh, and we have a third-party off-the-shelf scheduling software uh, that we are utilizing. Uh, it's robust. We feel it is. Uh, they have deployed this around the country. Uh, they have deployed this in Harris County that's operating 10 sites. We know it works. We are, you know, again, we are asking people, you know, please schedule an appointment as soon as you get that email or phone or text because, as we know, there are over 400,000 people waiting to get vaccines, and all we can do this week is 5,000. Yes, uh, we are using a distant, different scheduling uh, system. Yes, and uh, as everybody is aware, there have been you know, several community-based registration sites uh, that council members have stood up. We are working with them. Uh, we have identified the uh, most vulnerable uh, zip codes. I think there are about 15 zip codes. Uh, I know all of you have that information. And we are working with the council members in those zip codes to assist them 
in standing out, standing up those registration sites. We'll have more information posted on uh, Dallas City Hall site with the addresses and locations and times when they will be uh, operated uh, as early as this weekend. So the first round when we got in late December was 2,000 that got the first shot. And starting yesterday, we started the process to give the second shot. That operation is currently ongoing. Yesterday, we did 356 of our uh, first responders uh, come through for the second shot. That operation, uh, we're we are hoping to get it done quickly so that we don't have two parallel operations going on. Uh, hopefully by the end of this week or over the weekend, we'll complete the second dose for the 2,000 that got the first. This is a drive-through only uh, uh, setup that we have. Uh, I'll turn to Chief Stidham to see if somebody does walk up what the plans are. I believe there's a plan. Yeah, like Rocky said, we do have a plan for, for people that walk up. We're encouraging everybody to sign up through the website and show up in a vehicle, because that's, it'll slow the process a little bit, but we will be able to work through those issues. Uh, that's, that's, yes, sir, that is a concern, but um, again, like Rocky said, this, this is a drive-through site. We're encouraging everybody to come in a vehicle just to make the process go smoother. But we, we will have a plan, or we do have a plan in place for those that do not show up in a vehicle. Let me follow up on that. I just want to follow up on that answer. Uh, you know, Fair Park is a walk-up site, and that's on, uh, you know, one of the criteria reasoning behind Pick, uh, picking Fair Park at that site was where people could come by a dot bus or light, light rail, uh, and there's not a whole lot to walk, and if people need assistance, you know, there are golf carts that can get people from the train station to the vaccination building. We are working with Dallas County to put in on the registration site uh, another uh, checkbox, preference of people, whether they want to come to a drive-through site or a walk-up site. So. When we sort through the database and ask for, say, give me 10,000 names for next week, we'll make sure we only get people who have uh, opted to come to a drive-through site so we don't have uh, the mix-up where people get an invitation to schedule uh, an appointment but do not have a way to get here. So we're trying to work through those, and if it's not up already, it should be very quickly giving people the option uh, to select the type of uh, vaccination site they want to be at. So when, before vaccinations were available to the state, the state put out a call saying, please go online and let us know if you want to be a vaccine provider. And we were one of the first to say, yes, we want to be a vaccine provider. Uh, and so what, and at that time when we applied, we said we want to do our first responders first. And so they gave us 2,000 uh, vaccines and we vaccinated our first responders. As more vaccines became available, they sent everybody a questionnaire saying, what is your capacity? How many people can you do a day? And so we submitted, uh, responded to that, that we could do up to 10,000 a day if we are allotted that many vaccines. So city, I mean, the state started consolidating vaccine providers throughout the state into these mega hubs to avoid confusion because they were, I, th I believe in our, in Dallas County, there are over 700 vaccine providers that signed up with the state uh, and the state was giving, you know, 50 vaccines to a physician's office and 100 to a, uh, to a pharmacy. So, and there was some confusion there. People calling 400 different providers to see if they had vaccines. So the state decided to create hubs 
And as they started expanding the hubs, they asked us if we want to continue or we're still interested in being a hub. We said yes, and that's how we got our first allocation of 5,000. So Dallas County Health Human Services are contracted medical authority, and we, uh, we are uh, relying on their expertise uh, who are going, uh, are, they are prioritizing based on CDC state guidance and also the Dallas County uh, Working Group. I don't know, what is that called, Dr. Isaacs? Dallas County Health and Human Services Public Health Committee, made up of experts, uh, they are they are prioritized as to how, who should get vaccines first. In addition, uh, and we have posted an FAQ on the city website this morning that we released to the mayor and council, uh, talking about the process, what to expect, uh, you know, what the criteria is. So, and I'm going to read there. The City of Dallas is scheduling appointments for the vaccine based on the risk criteria determined by the State of Texas and the COVID Vaccine Vulnerability Index and Proximity Index. The Vulnerability Index calculates priority based on age, area deprivation, chronic medical conditions, and other dynamic factors. The Proximity Index calculates based on geography, on geographic proximity to positive COVID cases adjusted for density and radius. Those are the criteria that Dallas County working with PCCI uh, are prioritizing the database that has 400,000 people registered so far. Uh, yeah, if they miss the appointment, we will, depending on uh, slots that are available, uh, we'll make an attempt to contact them saying Saturday between 11 and 12, we have an opening for you. Do you want to take it? Now, if they miss that, then they go back to the database. And then they don't go back to the bottom of the database. They will still, every time we ask for a list, they, they apply the same filters that I just talked about and send us a new list. So they could potentially get an appointment or an invitation to uh, schedule an appointment for the following week or the week after. We are talking to several partners. Again, it's the availability of vaccines. You know, right now we are designated as a hub, um, and you know we could operate under our authority, under the medical authority of Dr. Marshall Isaacs, to open up additional hubs. It depends on when we get the vaccines, uh, and and I just want to be clear: by opening up a site in an area that has the most need, we get it. And we'd love to be able to prioritize people from within that area. But the state, the way it's set up right now, it doesn't allow us to go and do a certain population or certain zip codes. It has to meet the 1B criteria, and then they are prioritized by Dallas County Health and PCCI as we get the list. So it's not doesn't mean if we are in a particular area that we can prioritize people that live over there. What is the last part of the question? Recommendation from City of Dallas would be to call the Dallas County 
human health services hotline that they have established and make the request, see if they can shift them to the fair park location. Uh, we are working through those uh, uh, details, uh, uh, but I would say, Chief Sidham, we will do two times. We'll, we'll try to contact them twice. We have limited resources to contact people. When we requested and made application uh, to be a vaccine provider, uh, we were very clear that we want to, because at that time they're only doing 1A, which is healthcare workers, and we said we want to do all our EMS paramedics uh, that are considered healthcare workers. And then we had a little left over where we did our uh, first uh, frontline patrol officers. And so we had asked for 5,000. If we have to do all our first responders, all of DFR personnel, all of DPD personnel uniformed, we need 5,000 doses, and we only got two. Now under this new, uh, new allocation that we got, we can, we can prioritize healthcare workers, and they're not a lot because we have been uh, being assisted by Dallas County Health Human Services from their allocation, UT Southwest and Parkland, Baylor, Scott and White, where uh, a paramedics and EMS personnel that did not get a shot the first go around are able to get it through those other sources. So, but as far as our law enforcement police officers, uh, unless they meet that 1B criteria, uh, we are not able to prioritize them at this time. Yeah, when I was so again, you know, that we're definitely encouraging people to have a vehicle. Um, you know, there is an opportunity if people don't have a vehicle that we could reach out to them. We do have a call line set up. Uh, so, uh, you know, we'll be able to reach out to them and, and try to uh, work with the county, work with Fair Park site and so forth. But we want to make sure everybody gets vaccinated at the end of the day, that's our goal. So. We're gonna work through all the processes. We know there's gonna be things that come up that we're gonna to have to uh, clean up and, and fix, and we're, we'll get that done. But we was, again, we was, our goal is to get everybody vaccinated. Yes, sir. So again, it takes about 80 people to run this operation a day. Um, from the incident commander all the way down to the people that are gonna uh, help us with parking and so forth. We have DPD, we have DFR, all of our vaccinators are, are Dallas Fire Rescue personnel. We also have the Office of Emergency Management. So as you can imagine, um, with 200 people approximately showing up per hour, um, it, it, it takes a lot. So we'll have, we'll have tents set up outside for our folks for shelter. We'll have, um, you know, we've got food operations going on for everybody that's gonna be working throughout. Um, we're working very closely with the convention center as well to, to help us with our logistical needs. Uh, we've got transportation plan that we've got worked out with DPD. Uh, so. There's a lot that goes on behind the scenes, and I assure you, the team that's 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 running this uh, behind the scenes is outstanding. And um, you know, when we vaccinated, we used the same process for our 2,000 first responders that Rocky spoke of, police and fire, and the marshal's office, and um, it went very, very well, very, very smoothly. So uh, we're going to be operating for. Like he said, for four or five days, we're gonna be operating simultaneous operations on two separate floors. Uh, so we got, we're still gonna be running our police and fire vaccines because it's very important that we get them their second dose. And um, then we're gonna be running this operation on a separate floor and different entrances and so forth. So there's a lot going on behind the scenes. Um, I wish everybody could see it, but um, you know, I just, I appreciate the team that we have in place and all the hard work that's gone on. I, I didn't hear you. Can you say? Yeah. 
Yes, sir. Yeah. So again, we get the names from Dallas County, and then we send out the uh, the uh, message to red for them to register. No, sir. N not at this time. So if they get their first dose at K. Bailey Hutchison, they will have to come back to K. Bailey Hutchison Convention Center for the second dose. When they get vaccinated, they get a card that shows they got the first dose, the type of vaccine they got. Right now, we are only doing Moderna at this site, and there'll be a date when they need to come back. And we ask that they come back at approximately the same time that they came for their first dose. They came at 12 noon today, 28 days from now, come back at the same time. But they will get an email and a text reminder, and people who don't have either of those communication tools get a phone call from a live person reminding them of their appointment for their second dose. So there isn't any concern, I'm sorry, Honor, I know you're waiting patiently, but I'm just questions are important. I want to make sure I cover what you want to know. Uh, there isn't any concern to these people if they've gotten their first dose because I hear you saying that they're, you know, even now tonight, from here to there, I hear it nationally. We do not have a concern at this point. Uh, very similar to when we got our first dose for our first responders on December 28th. We got the second dose shipped to us so that we could start our second dose to those people uh, starting day 28. And we fully expect the state to stay committed to providing us with the second dose for the people we start vaccinating on Thursday. No, so, uh, you know, per direction of uh, the mayor, uh, we have solicited uh, uh, input from the council members on where those locations, and what we are doing right now, you know, we are focusing a lot on getting this site stood up, so, uh, and that's our goal, uh, to vet those locations, make sure that they are within those zip codes uh, that we identified that would be most helpful to have registration sites. Uh, we are providing uh, support to the council members. Most of them are being run by volunteers and we thank them for that. Uh, we are providing technology, laptops, PPE. There's some other requests uh, that have come through. So you're working through all of that. We as the city, uh, you know, commit to helping uh, neighborhood registration sites as best as we can. There, I mean, this weekend there were a couple of sites in West Dallas that Council Member Chad Vest had uh, operated. Uh, there are many more sites uh, that are expected to go live this weekend. No, so the 2,000 second doses was a separate allocation. The 5,000 that we got, that we're starting operation tomorrow, it's dedicated to the public. Uh, the the process is very similar. They get an email or a text and tell you, give you a link, go register, pick an appointment date, and come back. Uh, there was some confusion uh, on from the county side on uh, being secure where the invitation was able to be uh, shared among people and register when they're not qualified. We wanted to avoid that, and we have gone with a system 
that has been used at other locations and we have talked to those people and it's secure and we know it works. So we are, uh, we did emergency uh, contracts late last night uh, and uh, you know, we are pushing out those invitations right now. It's a new software. It's, a, it's off the shelf. It's not off the shelf. It's a custom software that has been uh, uh, built for this purpose. They started off with doing, when we first had to do appointments for testing, they used that and they added the vaccination part to it. Is it QR code based? No. Um, so again, we'll, we'll send out the message. Uh, we do have a process in the end that we're working on internally that'll have a QR code that'll ask some questions where we can gather demographic information and so forth. But, but the, the software that we're talking about is not QR code based. Okay, so um, again, we have, there's approximately 2,100 DFR and about 35 to 3,700 DPD. So we're still a little ways off. Um, we should, after, after uh, this week with the second dose, we're gonna be just over 50% because we're working with some local partners too to continue uh, vaccinating our folks with their fo first dose uh, and so Again, it's very important that we get all of our people because they're on the front lines every day out there with the public and, and making sure that public is taken care of. So uh, we need to make sure our people are, are vaccinated and we're working through that process. First name is Brett, B-R-E-T. Yeah, Stidham. S T I D H A M. No, this this operation. So the police and fire operation and the the operation that we're going to start with the residents on Thursday. It's all under one. Okay. Right. Thank you all. Thank you.